بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلى على رسول الكريم أما بعد إذا رأيتم الناس أمات الصلاة ونوسين ما أم الصلاة البيدد صلاة والبينون إكزستنت إن إنتاج كونغريجيشن حتى لا ترى فيها خاشعة you will not see one person in entire congregation who is reading salat with concentration and dedication. The Mu'adhin is calling Bakul Marana Yusuf Rahmatullah Alayhi Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar four times in the beginning to say that whatever is given you, whatever is your priority in life and what is your ambition that is stopping you from Allah and the Masjid and Salah then through these four components, wind, water, sand, and fire, I will wipe you out with wind, I will send tornadoes, hurricanes, and whirlwinds, like how I send Ad. فَتَرَ الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا صَرْعَةً كَأَنَّهُمْ عَجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَةً نَخْلٍ مُنْكَعِرٍ Like how date palm trees have fallen to the ground, uprooted, no mention, and nothing left of them, or will send floods and tsunamis, and we'll wipe you out like how we wiped out Nu Fatahna Abwaba Sama Bima Immunhamir wa Fajarna al Arda Uyunan Falta Kalma from above the sky the heavens water rained down from the ground water came up, it wiped out the people of Nu or with sand Fakasafna Bihi Wabidari al Ar. We will swallow you like how we swallowed Qarun. We will swallow you and wipe you out like how we wiped out Inna arsalna alayhim hasiba aliyaha safilaha We wiped out the people of Lut Or we will send balls of lightning with fire and wipe you out If you think so anything is more important than Salah At the end Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar six times Telling this Ummah that North, East, West or South Whichever direction you look, above you, below you, everything belongs to Allah. Nothing, oh, nothing is in your possession. You don't own anything. You don't have any power. You don't have any control. So now when the Mu'adhin says, Hayya ala salah, it is a command, come to salah, Hayya ala al-falah. Not only it is a command of Allah, but guaranteed, if you come and you fulfill this requirement, then you will achieve success in dunya and akhirah. Aisha bi az Rabi'ah came to the Nabi of Allah, Udu Allah, yajalni min ahli al-shabah. Make a dua that Allah makes me from amongst the people who you intercede. Wa yurzukani murafakataka fi al-jannah. And Allah gives me your companionship in jannah. Nabi alayhi salam told him, no problem, very easy. Aini li kathrati al-sujood. Help me in making excessive sajda. أقرب ما يكون العبد من الله أن يكون ساج أن يكون ساجدا. The closest a person is to Allah is when he is in sajda. How dark must his heart be while in sajda? His heart is outside the masjid, outside salat. See ما هم في وجوههم من أثر السجود. On their faces you will see the effect of sajda. سبحان الله سبحان الله says هو نور يَغْشَى وُجُوهَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ That it is that light that will envelop the faces on the day of Qiyamah. Nabi alayhi salam said that on the day of Qiyamah, every Nabi will boast about his Ummah and every Ummah will have a sign on their faces which the Nabi will recognize them. فَأَرْجُوا أَنْ أَكُونَ يَوْمَئِذٍ أَكْثَرَهُمْ I have hope on the day of Qiyamah, that I will have the most Ummatis that are going into Jannah. Thus, Sajda, if we increase Sajda, then this Noor will be visible on the day of Qiyamah. Uh, when a person reads the Ayah of Sajda, for Sajda, and he goes into Sajda, اَعْتَزَلَ shaitan Shaitan runs and he flees, Yabaki in tears, وَيَقُولُ يَا وَيْلَى he says, O oh, destruction be upon me. Amara hada bis sujood. This insan was commanded to make sajda. Fasajda falahul jannah. He fulfilled the command of Allah and he will get jannah because he obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa umirtu bis sujood. Fasaytu fali an nar. I was commanded to make sajda. I breached the command. My destiny is jahannam.
Hazrat Ali ibn Abdullah ibn Abbas his habit was yes should do fi kulli yawmin alf sajda he used to make 1000 sajdas daily kanu yusammunahu as-sajjad and he was nicknamed sajjad the person who makes a lot of sajda as Sa'id bin Jubair used to say that I did not have any regret min ma asa ala shay'in min ad-dunya illa as-sujud I have no regret of anything I didn't done in dunya except the moments I never spent in front of Allah in sajda Uqba ibn Muslim used to say ma min khaslatin that no quality that a person has that he will regret and the moments حَيْثُ يَخِيرُ السَّاجِدًا that he will fall into sajda as Ibn Muhyiddin used to say لَمَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْأَرْضَ لَنَا ظَلُولًا when Allah has made this earth subservient and we walk on the backs of this earth فَنَحْنُ and we walk on it تَحْتَ أَقْدَامِنَا نَتَعُوهَا بِهَا as we walk on the earth thus is the climax of humbleness that we place our faces and our foreheads which is the fountainhead of knowledge and the honor of this insan to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how humble we are I am in the I my help is what the ones whose hearts are broken when a person is in sajda aqrab ilallah he used to say he said now on that ground which you walked with proud and arrogance and your feet trampled on it you put your most noble head sublime creation of Allah on the ground you have broken yourself now when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do for you Malana Yishman used to say that in all ibadah there is restrictions but is limited in zakat you can give zakat, zakat but you can do everything else in hajj you'll go in ihram but you can sleep you can eat etc in ramadan you abstain from eating sleeping etc but you can still walk around look around sleep etc so the restrictions in those ibadat are limited the salat has all of these ibadat it is ramadan it is hajj and it has zakat in it but its restrictions are much more why to teach us few things you should say one to teach us a thought that we want complete aslim aslam to li rabbil alameen the lesson of salat is i want complete submission from you number two how in salat you abstain from everything outside salat abstain from everything number three how you follow the imam in salat you have to follow the imam of anbiya janabi rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in your life number four how in salat all your amala unified you are one ummah you are united you need to be united in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like how in salat your sufuf are in a straight line likewise also your life needs to be with unity when salat will be not read one salat will be read but not in jamaat two three salat will be read with jamaat but not the masail al faqihun wahidun ashad ala shaitan min alfi abin one scholar is more valuable than a thousand worshippers we need to learn how to read salat what the umajibat what the sunan all the masail for example takbir tahrima when we start our salat we said allahu akbar we raised our hands our lips didn't move our tongue didn't move according to imam hanifa rahmatullahi as if that person is not read salat is not started his salat 40 years of salat is no salah because we didn't know one masla if this is a condition of one masla imagine the entire deen and in our our entire life aswaw nasi sariqatan alladhi yasriqu salatahu the worst of thieves 
are those people who steal from their salah. Sahaba was shocked. Kayfa? Qala la yutim ruku'aha wa la sujudaha. He does not read his ruku, his sajda, his kauma, his jalsa. None of these positions are read with contentment, but it's done in haste. Ibn Masur used to say, as salatu mikyal. Salat is a scale. Whoever fulfills <coughs> this requirement, whoever discharges this full requirement, then Allah will fulfill his needs. وَمَنْ طَفَّفَ And whoever has deficiency in his salat, فَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا قَالَ اللَّهُ فِي الْمُطَفِّفِينَ Then you know what Allah has said about those who do not weigh properly, weigh للمطففين For them is severe warnings. A sahabi came into the masjid, he read salat, he came to meet the Nabi of Allah, Nabi alayhi salam, told him, اِرْجِعْ فَصَلِّ فَإِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَلِّ Go back and read your salat, you have not read salat. He went back, he read again, go back and repeat your salat again, go back three times. He came back said, I put my hands up, فَعَلِّمْنِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I don't know how to read salat, teach me please, O Nabi of Allah. Nabi Alayhi Salaam told him, when you read your salat, حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ جَالِسًا حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ سَاجِدًا Read every posture properly, ruku, kawma, Jalsa, Sajda, there are many adiyya, not only the little bit that we know, we need to go to ulama and learn this qareeba min as-sawa. All four positions of the Nabi of Allah were close. Kana Anas, idha rafa ra'asahu min al-ruku. It was a habit of Azad Anas radiyallahu an, when he used to stand up from ruku, qom hatta naqool qad nasiya. Sahaba said sometimes, he would stand so long in coma, that is after ruku before sajda, we would say that he actually forgot now what to do. Don't read your salat, kanakri al-gharab, kanakri al-deek. Your salat should not be like the pecking of a crow, like the pecking of a hen. Rush up, down, quickly, go to town. No, that's not the salat of a musalli. لا ينظر الله يوم القيامة إلى عبد لا يقيم صلبه بين ركوعه وسجوده الله will not look at mercy at that person who reads his salat on the day of قيامة when he used to read his salat with haste he should just rush and quickly try to finish his salat salat is not about completing the salat and finishing it is about perfecting a salat that will go in front of the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be a means of qabooliyat for us and the dua that we make after salat. Number four, a salat which shall be read without khushu. إِذَا قَوْمَ رَجْلُ فِي الصَّلَاةِ أَقْبَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِوَجْهِهِ When a person stands for salat, Allah turns towards him. فَإِذَا الْتَفَتَ قَالَ يَا بْنَ أَدَمْ إِلَى مَنْ تَلْتَفِتْ When he's in salat and his attention goes somewhere else, Allah says, Oh my beloved servant, where are you turning to? إِلَى مَنْ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّنِّي Is that being who you turn into better than your Allah? فَإِذَا الْتَفَتَ الثَّالِثَةِ When he turns the third time away from Allah, Allah is addressing him, سَرَّفَ اللَّهُ وَجَهُ عَنُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns his attention away from the servant. إِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ a musalli yunaji rabbahu. A musalli is talking to his Allah. When he says alhamdu, Allah says hamidani abdi. My servant has praised me. Athna alayya abdi. Every position, every statement, every ayah of surah fatiha. Till the end. Hada bayna wa bayna abdi. This is between me and my servant. Wa li abdi ma sa'al. And I will grant him what he wants for those people who have that concentration and that tawajju in salat. One time the Imam forgot the amount of rakats in salat. He asked the musallis, some said three, some said four. One musalli said, I'm definitely sure it's three rakats. He said, how do you know you? So how sure can you be? He said, I guarantee you every day in my Isha salat, I got four shops. I do 
a check and a count and I do a hisab of how much profits I made. Today I finished three shops. There was one more shop left. I never finished that hisab. What has become of our salah? When Imam gave the Musalli's Dawat, the Alan was made. After Isha Salah, there's Dawat for the Musallis. Everybody went to the house of the Imam. As they reached there, the security asked them questions. Question number one, what did the Imam read in the first rakat and question two, second rakat? If you answer that, you can go in. Most of the Musallis didn't know, so they were turned back. So they became very upset with the Imam. They said, please call the Imam. So Imam said, very simple. I said, Dawat is for the Musallis of the Masjid. Whoever is a Musalli of the Masjid, the Dawat is for him. If you don't know what the Imam read, then the Dawat is not for you. Because you are not a Musalli of the Masjid. One day a person was reading Salat in the Masjid. And he heard Majnoon singing praises of Layla. So he screamed, he came to the window of the masjid and he screamed, Majnoon, what is wrong with you? You distracting my salat. He said, Majnoon said, what a musalli are you? I'm outside the masjid singing my praises of my Layla. You are, you are in front of Allah. You are under the creator of Layla. And you are distracted by my words. You are in the masjid. I'm not distracted. What kind of a musalli are you? So we need to check how and what is the level of our khushu and concentration in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we read in salah. The amal for today is as mentioned previously to make it a habit of reading surah Baqarah. A sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, بينما أنا أقرأ الليل سورة البقرة إذ سمعت بجبة I was reading Surah Baqarah I heard a loud sound I thought so it was my horses something was wrong فإذا مثل المصباح مدلى بين السماء والأرض then like a lantern that was floating in the air I seen this bright light the Islam told him تلك الملائكة تنزلت لقراءة سورة البقرة. That light that you seen was due to the malaika coming down for you reciting Surah Baqarah. And the Sahabi stopped when he seen that light. So he told him, أما إنك لو مضيت لا رأيت العجائب. If you continued reading, you would have seen more amazing. More abnormal abnormalities, more supernatural things would have come forward. Yu'tabil Quran yawm al qiyamah wa ahlihi. On the day of Qiyamah, those people that used to read Quran and practiced on Quran, they will be brought on the day of Qiyamah, and in front of them will be Surah Baqarah and Surah Ali Ibn. If we cannot read the entire Surah, at least and tell Allah, this is what I can manage, first ruku and last ruku. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever he feared and he had some concern of any calamities or problems or issues, Ali used to read this dua, Allahumma inna naj'aluka fi nuhurihim wa na'udhu bika min shururihim. O Allah, we place you in front of them and you, we make you our shield. And we ask you protection from the evil. Ulama say this is a very mujarab amal for protection from any difficulties or hardships. So we should try to make a habit every morning, three, five, seven times, to read this dua. Wa akhiru ta'awana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.